Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University. Hi, I'm Nick, and I love Washington's geology. I've been teaching it for 20 years now. Let's hit the highways, visit places you all know, and I can help you see Washington like you've never seen Washington before. Welcome to Central Rocks, Roadside Geology. Large piles of dark colored rocks bask in the sun at selected spots along beautiful Canyon Road in the Yakima River Canyon south of Ellensburg. Have you noticed these rocks before? How long have they been there? Did the river bring them in? How can we figure that out? For starters, we need to study the Yakima River itself. Okay, well, I, I think we've we got to get to this river to answer this question. We've got to do our homework and learn how these rivers work. So let's get over to the Yakima River itself and uh, take a little dip, see what we can find out. I got my trusty hammer. Let me take my backpack off. Uh, you know, there's lots of geologists with lots of fancy equipment. Um, I've got my Crocs. Uh, I've got my hammer. That's about all I need. So, it's a beautiful spring morning. This is water coming off the Cascades. Probably going to be a little bit icy. I'm a big boy. I think I can handle it. So, we need to get into this water. We need to collect typical rocks that a river is going to deposit. Let's see what I can find. Uh-huh, uh-huh, are you noticing something? We want to think like a first grader. We want to make simple observations and then get cute once we get those observations together. We've got everybody rounded to some degree, right? You've agreed that these are, are not angular pieces of rock. You'll also agree that they're roughly the same size. We don't really have boulders. I could go in here and pick out another hundred rocks and I'm pretty confident they're all going to be about this shape and about this size. Rivers have a beautiful ability, a tremendous ability to sort out their rocks by size. Have you ever thought of that? Right here all these rocks are about this size. Further upstream, way up at the source of these streams that feed into the Yakima River, We've got the big boulders left way up high. Smaller rocks are not here. They're carried much further downstream and we need the water to be quieter. So we've got at this spot, the river bringing in these sized rocks over and over and over again. The more that you study nature, the more you realize there's a beautiful organized plan to what's going on out here. It's not random. There's actual systematic patterns to what's going on with things like rivers. So we're looking for things that rivers deposit and this is what they're doing. Semi-rounded, all about the same size and the next step we need to break a few of these guys open and see if these are all about the same or if we've got a wild variety of rock types. So let's go do that. Well you know the answer right? You've played in rivers before. River rocks, in addition to being rounded and sorted by size, always show variety. Serpentinite, rhyolite, granite, andesite, diorite, quartzite, these are the common rocks in the Yakima River. So now that we know what telltale river deposits look like, let's cruise down Canyon Road to revisit those mysterious rock piles. Well, okay, here we are. We're in the Yakima River Canyon. This is the same Yakima River that we visited just a moment ago. And the rocks look a little different, I must say. 
are significantly different. So we've got, a, we've got a little work to do here. We've got thousands of rocks in this pile and we're right here next to the same Yakima River. Let's take a look at these guys quickly. I'm just going to grab a few. Don't go anywhere. This guy. This guy. Oh, baby! This guy. Now let's look at shapes. Would you call this rounded? I wouldn't call this rounded. Round. Angular. Would I call these rocks at this spot about all the same size? I would not. Just a quick scan across this whole pile tells us we've got boulders up to one meter across down to particles that are just a few millimeters across. But the most important observation we can make here to tell us that there's clearly a different story at work besides river deposition is breaking these guys open. Same idea. Look at that. Brown, reddish brown on the outside, beautiful black on the inside. We'll get another one. Reddish brown on the outside, beautiful black on the inside. I think I'll save my strength on this one, but same idea. Reddish brown on the outside, beautiful black on the inside. Get a hand lens on these guys. Super tiny minerals, can't really identify anything. The point is, every one of these rocks at this site, big or small, basalt. Careful observation of both river rocks and these mysterious basalt blocks lead us to an important conclusion. The event to bring these rocks into these piles had to have happened quickly, not slowly over thousands of years. We have no tumbled rocks here. There was no time to create rounded rocks and to sort them by size. This had to have been a quick event. And since the rocks are all basalt, and since there are clear paths to the adjacent ridges, otherwise known as arroyos, a geologist working here can build a convincing case that these rocks are the result of a debris flow, a dramatic slurry of rock and water that flows down steep slopes, often associated with violent weather. Once the field geologists determine the event, the next task is to determine the age of the event. Using volcanic ash layers above or below the deposit would be an example of how we could figure out when the event happened. For this particular set of debris flows in the Yakima River Canyon, we have a more accurate method to date the event. Eyewitness accounts, weather records, and aerial photographs. On the afternoon of July 3rd, 1998, Ellensburg experienced a rare, intense precipitation event. An area that normally receives an annual nine inches of precipitation per year, the Ellensburg area received two inches in two hours. Heavy rain mixed with hail battered the high ridges that tower over this section of the canyon. There was no time for the water to soak into the subsurface, so most of the water began running over the surface, picking up blocks of basalt as it traveled. So you need to picture this. We've got this slurry of water and large rocks, big and small, up to one meter boulders, down to grains of sand all coming down together, each of these little rivulets feeding into bigger streams, and then everybody concentrating right here. All that rock pushed across this road, out into the river, 50 feet of rock, thousands of rocks themselves, carried down and dumped here within a two hour time span. A very dramatic event. By late afternoon, impressive piles of basalt boulders sat directly on Canyon Road, and those piles continued halfway out into the Yakima River Channel itself. 
Equally impressive, completely new arroyos, or little coolies, were cut by the rushing water. A mini lesson in dramatic change in short bursts was complete. Perhaps a more accurate way to imagine the past, short bursts of intense change instead of slow changes, sand grain by sand grain, over millions of years. Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University.